I am Mark Callahan, and can can you hear me through the mic? I think so. Okay, so I I work on making my SQL happy and performant at Google, uh, but I, I'm just talking about InnoDB here. A lot of uh, focus in the past year has been put on the SMB performance issues with InnoDB, and a lot of progress was made. And only recently, uh, Percona has uh, moved on to looking at I.O. performance issues, and, and then uh, eventually IBM looking at them too. And there's some problems there and some opportunities. The improvements are pretty easy to get. And so I'll be describing uh, the back, what I call the, the, the I.O. architecture or the background I.O. architecture from the perspective of how a dirty page moves through the system. The slides, these slides are available. I don't know if Percona has place where we upload them, but that URL should, should get you there if you can connect to it. Yeah, we'll be publishing the slides afterwards and there'll be a blog post to say where they are. Okay. Um, a lot of the code used in here, it's all been published. Uh, it's in the V3 Google patch at code.google.com. I've been updating the V3 patch, so the most recent update was April, April 12th, which has all of the I.O. changes I, I use or describe all the I.O. changes I use at the end for a performance, performance slide I will show. Uh, a lot of the features, there's a lot of similarity between uh, features in the Percona builds and features in the, the V3 Google patch. So the Percona build is a much easier way to consume these changes. And then now MySQL 5.4, Michael, uh, they don't have the I.O. They have some of the I.O. changes, but I assume they will get more of them soon. So it, it's, there's an easy way for people to consume this, which is good. Uh, so the context for this, how to make a really, really good or great OLTP engine. So I assume about 15 years ago, Hakey had some free time and got the Gray and Reuter textbook maybe read uh, some Oracle documentation and got a typical PC, which had one CPU and one disk, and built a great engine for, for that environment. And then along came large multi-core servers and servers that could, do a, could affordably do a large number of IOPS. And we've begun to confront those performance problems. So I will focus on some of the architectural issues. And along with this are some, some open questions. One is, should we begin using larger pages for InnoDB? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't have a, an opinion. I haven't done any performance testing. There are papers that would suggest we should. Uh, the other question is, can InnoDB effectively use 10,000 IOPS for a read-intensive workload it can without a few patches would help to get more background threads for reading. For write intensive workloads, you will have difficulty using, getting in ODB, in ODB to, uh, to use the available I.O. capacity. But it's not, not, not that hard to fix. So the high level, a lot of the reading, the read requests are done directly in the, the context of the user thread that's executing a query except for when prefetching is done, and then that's handled by some background I.O. threads. InnoDB has background threads that perform a variety of I.O. tasks. Transaction log, write, uh, writing, writing the transaction log, writing dirty pages, and handling prefetch requests are all done by these background threads. The InnoDB has a notion of an extent that's 64, 16 kilobyte pages. And another interesting point is that when, when there are many pending I.O. requests, if they're for adjacent 
blocks on disk in the file, NodeDB will merge uh, the, the requests and, and use one operation, one system call, rather than one per, per adjacent request. And then finally, the biggest, a big problem is that there's some rate limiting involved in this. And it's, the limits are based on the capacity of a single disk server. So you'll see code where there's a lot of numbers. They're all less than 100, 5, 10, 20. And they all represent the number of IOs it wants to do at a certain point in time. When you have a sushi, the, the big box that they were just talking about, which can do thousands of IOPS, 5 and 10 and 20 doesn't, doesn't make much sense. You really want that to be 5%, 10%, 20%. Uh, so there's, that issue has to get resolved to be able to use what's available. NODB has a few background threads. In, for IO, there's one that's interesting. The, the main background thread, the function name is serve master thread. That has a, it's a big loop. Part of the loop is I do this once per second. Part of the loop is I do this once per 10, per 10 seconds and then Finally, there's an idle loop. And the once per second is I force the transaction log to disk once per second, regardless of what else is going on in the system. I try to make space available in the transaction log buffer, the, the in-memory buffer, so that if a, a transaction arrives, I have space in, in the buffer for its changes. Maybe, I take, uh, maybe a fuzzy checkpoint is done then it, it will uh, read up to five pages to merge insert buffer records. So the insert buffer, I'll describe later. But this is five IOPS, or five IOs per second. Not enough on a busy server. And then finally, it will try to write 100 dirty pages from the buffer pool using async IO. The insert buffer IO is done using synchronous IO. And by synchronous here, I, I mean the loop waits for that operation to complete. The dirty pages written to the, uh, written, written to the database file, that's done using async IO. So it just issues the requests and then, uh, and then continues. Uh, pages are selected from a flush list. I'll describe what that is. But essentially, that's maintaining pages in order of when the page was made dirty. Is Kevin Burton here? There he is, OK. He talks about this sometimes. But <laughs> there's a, a checkpoint continuously going on in the background where dirty pages have to be flushed before the log records that made that page dirty would get uh, truncated from the log, transaction log file. And then if. A lot of work was done in the one second loop. It, start, it restarted immediately rather than wait, uh, sleeping for one second and trying again. The 10 second loop, um, some of it, it seems like it was just put in there. They also write dirty pages. And I don't really understand why that has to be done in the 10 second loop and not just only done in the one second loop. They also do some insert buffer merging. Also, of course, the transaction log to disk. The interesting new thing is removing deleted rows. When you do a delete, the row is marked as having been deleted. It's not physically removed until no, no query could possibly need to see that row. So if you have a long, a long, if you do begin and a lot of deletes happen and, you're, and you run some queries and you don't commit that transaction, which is a read only, that will uh, not allow the deleted rows to be removed. Uh, and then a fuzzy checkpoint is done. And you can interrupt. There's a lot of details in here. I don't, I'm not gonna, going to be able to explain it all, but for myself and other people who are interested in it, hopefully this can serve as uh, reference notes. And, but interrupt if you want to contradict anything I say or explain anything. Um, when the server is idle, NODB gets a bit more busy doing more work to catch up to um, write dirty pages back to disk, and remove deleted rows. So the, 
InnoDB has this notion of a, an I.O. request array. So there's, for every type of I.O., there's a request array and a thread. And the array has 256 slots. There's one for the insert buffer, transaction log, prefetch reads, and page reads. So that's four arrays, four threads, one thread per array. The, re the array can hold 256 requests. And the array is, the thread is continuously scanning that array to look for, to look for requests to process. When it is time to uh, find a request, a linear scan of the, of the array is, is done. And if there are, there are any old requests, meaning two seconds or older, they, are, they have priority. And if there are not, it looks at the uh, low, so a file offset for InnoDB is 64 bits. This looks at the low 32 bits and uh, chooses the request with the uh, lowest offset value. Meaning, if you have a high offset, potentially you might age out to two seconds, and then you would get issued. Uh, this pat, uh, so choosing, this is two two passes on the array now: one to find old, and one to find lowest file offset. Uh, the next thing that's done is InnoDB looks to determine if there are requests pending for adjacent blocks, and this is done for ascending order. And for every pend, uh, adjacent request it finds, it's another pass on the array. And this will merge up to 64 requests, which means you're doing up to 64 passes on this array to, to find the requests to merge. If you have merged, then you need to temporarily allocate a buffer um, so that the, uh, to perform the operation. And this is that. Has this been measured to have a noticeable impact on CPU utilization? Yes. Uh, and I, I, so I'm, I'm describing official InnoDB. We've changed some things, and Percona has changed things. I haven't described them all. One thing I notice is you put this on SSD, and it starts doing, you get this on, if you get this on a system doing a large number of IOPS, page checksum, verification, uses a lot of CPU, and if you hack InnoDB to make the request array, request array larger, let's say 5,000 or 2,000, it shows up. And some of the problems were fairly easy to fix. For example, when it iterates over the slots, instead of just bumping a, incrementing a pointer to look at the next position in the array, it calls a function, which is really just incrementing a pointer into sequential memory. And that was trivial to fix. Um, so if you make, if at this level, 256 slots, it's not a problem. But when you make, allow it to have more slots, it becomes a problem. Um, so it merges the requests, performs one system call to do it. At that, when you have merged the requests, none of the, if it's for reading, none of the blocks are then available to be used or re read from the user perspective until the, 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 the large I.O. operation completes. Uh, so if we had real async I.O., that, uh, you might, you can get better performance if you were able to uh, use async I.O. per block and as soon as the first block request completes, process that. But now when, when things are merged, there's a, an occasional performance penalty. Eventually, the I.O. operation completes. If they were merged, only the first I.O. operation is immediately, uh, the completion callback is processed. And then each time through the loop, the remaining completion callbacks will be completed. Page write protocol. So InnoDB has this thing called the double write buffer, which is, it's actually a file, or it's space in one of the, in one of the files that it uses. And so there's an in-memory, double write, I'll call it the double write log, and then what's on disk. And what this is, is used for is, uh, if, InnoDB, if there's a crash, a system crash, you might have written a 16K page, uh, you might have written a fraction of it. And so InnoDB uses that to recover those writes on crash recovery. 
And if you're using ZFS or some other file system that does copy on write, you don't need this functionality. So the page write protocol is first. Is that only done for data and index pages or also for log pages? The transaction log doesn't does not get this protection. Right. So the double write buffer uh, when uh, append it to a, an in-memory uh, buffer, and when that in-memory buffer gets full, and I think it's 128 slots in that, at that point, write that buffer to disk. When that write completes, force, or write that buffer to a file. When that write completes, force the write to disk. When that completes, submit async I.O. requests for the pages to do update in place. Wait, wait for those I.O. requests to be completed, and when they do complete, then uh, fsync the database file or files involved. And at that point, your writes are done. Is a background thread doing this, or is it the user thread? Uh, the page, page write thread is doing this. The 10 second thread, the 10 seconds just seems somewhat arbitrary. If you bumped yeah. it up to like 30 seconds, would that improve the fuzzy checkpointing? No, um, the, well, the real improvement is that the one second move has to be more aggressive, issue more IOs when it needs to. And when it needs to, meaning when you have too many dirty pages or when the insert buffer is too large. We're not, you're not, the per performance loss comes when you need space and pages were not cleaned up quickly enough. Uh, if you try to avoid IO, then eventually you'll run into the performance problem. So I, I don't think we're going to get away with doing less I.O. unless you tune it and you're using S, SSD. And so basically you're, basically you're developing a cost, right? You, you end up filling up the buffer pool by not writing, and then you need to write more and more and more and evict more? Uh, well, what I want to do is I just want to get it to, I don't, want to, I don't think I can get it to, re, to do less I.O. I just want to, want to get it to, to do the I.O. it needs to do faster. Okay. Um, so this is page write protocol. Um, prefetching is done in two cases. When it, think, uh, it has this notion of prefetching for random access within an ex extent and for sequential access. So for random access, when, when the code is about to issue a read, it determines whether uh, many other blocks or pages in that extent were recently accessed. And if they were, it issues prefetch requests for the remaining pages in that extent. And the second time for sequential, when it's accessing the last or the first page in, in the extent, depending on the access uh, order, it looks if many other pages in, in that extent were accessed, and if they were accessed in a sequential order. At that point, if it, if it thinks it saw sequential access, it will prefetch the next extent, either the one that follows or the one that's before, depending on the access pattern. But this prefetch is only done when you're on the last page in the current extent, or the first page, if you're descending. And so it's a bit late in the, in the access pattern to do the prefetch requests. And because then, when you do the prefetch requests for the next extent and they're merged, it's a big I.O., you don't complete the first block request fast. So this is something that needs to be resolved. Is yes? A, is a prefetch made both only for table scans or also for scanning leaf nodes in the B tree? Uh, the, well, everything's in a, everything's in a, a leaf node. Ah, right, it's faster, yeah. Okay. Uh, insert buffer. Uh, this can be a problem. It can, it can use up to half of, your, of, of the buffer pool pages. It's fully resident. It's a great optimization for reducing secondary index I.O. Um, the problem with it is that when it gets full, InnoDB does not flush it fast enough. The one second loop showed that five IOPS would be devoted to it. And on a, a thousand IOP server, five IOPS for this is you're not using the capacity available. When it get, becomes full, the optimization that it was providing is lost. And at that point, it's using half of your buffer pool and not doing anything. So uh, I don't know if Percona has, Percona has addressed this yet. It's in the V3 Google patch code that flushes the insert buffer. Actually, I think we may be doing it slightly differently based because we're running different benchmarks. 
but uh, <laughs> the problem is we have, it's not that hard to do, but we need to add code to flush the insert buffer faster to avoid the uh, losing the optimization and then, and then wasting the buffer pool. Merging insert buffer records. So when the insert buffer has, uh, it maintains deferred changes on insert and update to a secondary index block. And so to process, to apply these in the future, you read that page and then you read the deferred changes and, and uh, now you have a dirty page, but it's uh, an accurate page. <clears throat> this is done by a background thread and it's done on demand if that page is read by a user session. Async IO requests are issued to read the pages when the deferred changes must be applied, wait for them to complete, apply the changes, and move on. So the, the one second loop is blocking at this point in time to do these operations. Buffer pool protected by one mutex, whole other problem, although depending on whose branch you use, it, that may not be the case, I think. Someone may have already added multiple mutexes for that. Two important things are the flush list and the LRU list. Flush list is um, a list ordered by the first modification that makes the page dirty, and then when the page is written back to the file, it's moved on that list. And so you just continually walk from the end of the list to the front as things are continually being added to the front and flush. And when you find a page on that list to flush, you look within that the page's extent and any other dirty pages will also be scheduled to be flushed even if it's premature from um, even though they don't have to be and it will NODB will do that to uh, minimize random IO a bit uh, okay so I just described that the flood neighbor pages or adjacent pages is a terminology we use there's some thought that for SSD, maybe you don't want to flush the neighbor pages immediately because the, the random I.O. penalty is less. Um, so pro there's a lot of problems. They're solvable or they're solved depending on the code you use. PA here means patch available. Rate limits for background I.O. based on a single disk server. 5.4 per Kona, Google Patch have that. One thread per I.O. request array. We all have that patch. Insert buffer merge rate limit is too small. Google and Percona have that, although I think we're doing it differently. Dirty page writing rate limit is too small. We fixed that. The request arrays are too small for high IOP servers. I'm not sure if anything but the Google patch has that yet. We haven't really demonstrated the need for it, perhaps, to others. Request array iteration uses too much CPU. If you make these arrays larger, then we just have to make it faster to, uh, to iterate on them. They've got this macro that's used in a lot of places, and it's not a compile time constant. It's uh, doing integer division, I think. Um, and when you have running on a big SSD or a high IOP server, that ends up using too much CPU time. Finally, is we don't have enough visibility in what InnoDB is doing. For example, what's the average write latency for InnoDB from the, the perspective of the background I.O. thread? You can look at I.O. stat, but that doesn't tell you what InnoDB sees. So we need, to, we need more instrumentation. Uh, InnoDB is not good at enforcing max dirty pages because it doesn't flush dirty pages fast enough. And when you shut down a server, if you do a clean shutdown and it, there's a delay, it's because InnoDB is flushing the dirty pages um, at shutdown time. You don't have visibility into the utility of prefetching. You don't know if it's wasting a lot of IOPS to do that. <coughs> the prefetch requests for sequential access are submitted too late. And uh, we're not using real async IO, so request merging comes at a cost. Um, let me just show you the graph. So the red line is my new favorite benchmark, the insert benchmark, which I've used to look at a lot of the performance problems. Red line is uh, V3 Google patch. Green line is unpatched. This is the rate at which rows are inserted. V3 Google patch on a two disk server. So a cheap SATA disks. You can do about 250 IOPS. <coughs> V3 
Google cache settles down around 200 inserts per second. And I think that number should, is about 25 for unpatched. So 8x faster, same hardware. Um, just from a, a few changes to software. Um, and I don't know, Heike is not here. Ken is not here. Is anyone from NODB here? They hate that. Well, does it, it should. Someone said the community is on fire in the previous talk, and then uh, Barron's talk prior to that was, you know, it's time for us to step up. We can vent and nag and whine, and sometimes that's useful, but uh, we're doing stuff, and we just need to depend on ourselves to fix this. Thank you. My today's blog, the, the slides are linked from there. Yeah. Kevin? Are you benchmarking on SSDs yet? Uh, I need to buy an Intel device for home. I'll buy you one. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Um, so I've had some experience, but to, to really do it, I need to get, I've got the machine now, so it's worth. Is that Intel here? <laughs> can we can we raffle off one? Yeah. Um, 